to the Frank Beckman Show on News Talk 760 WJR. Well, I don't even know where to start with Washington, what's going on there. Uh, yesterday, there was a, a committee hearing in the House, and uh, there was a, a fellow from a brand new uh, a brand new government agency that is hiring what they called some 700 people. And he was uh, talking to the uh, committee, uh, of which Thaddeus McCotter, our Michigan congressman, is a member, about uh, hiring these people and consolidating these other government departments. And uh, listen to a little of this exchange here. Those people, they are individual human beings. The positions. I'm sorry, Congressman, I would not have line of sight into the internal staffing decisions of, for example, the OCC or the FDIC. That then how can you say you've consolidated the authority if they continue to do the same job in the same positions despite the fact this bureau is new bureaucracy has been created? I mean it in the quite literal sense that there is a... So do I. How can you say you've consolidated the authority within this new bureaucracy? If you cannot tell me whether the extant positions that are currently doing them have been eliminated or have had new tasks assigned to them. Otherwise, you've just added a new bureaucracy on top of people who are continuing to operate as the old bureaucracy. Uh, Congressman, Dodd-Frank, I think, is relatively explicit about this. There are authorities to administer an enumerated set of laws that transferred over to the Bureau on a date certain. That has happened. This is really this is really happening in, in front of Congress again, in Washington. And Congressman Thaddeus McCotter, if uh, if he had more hair, would have pulled the rest of it out. He's on the other end of our line. Good morning to you. Yeah, thanks, Frank. That was sort of surreal. This fellow didn't quite understand what you were getting at, that you're consolidating these departments. What's happening to all those jobs that exist right now? Are you firing all these people? He couldn't get that through his head. Well, I, I don't know, Frank. I think he did understand the question. He's a very bright individual. I think the answer might not have been one that he wished <laughs> to have broadcast in a public hearing. Look, we know from what happened with the mortgage meltdown, the financial crisis, that it took big government and big business to do it. What big government through the Democrats are trying to do by creating the new Consumer Financial Protection Board is pretend that it was all big, bad banks that did it, and that government's role in forcing private institutions to loan to people who may or may not have been able to afford them in the first place. They're trying to mask that fact. And so what they did was they used taxpayer money to do it. They decided to create a Consumer Financial Protection Board for wonderful reasons. They, and instead of what they should have done, which is find those wonderful reasons a place to go within the existing agencies and consolidate them, they created a whole new massive bureaucracy that not only addresses the problems that occurred in the big banks and the shadow banks out on Wall Street, now they affect community banks and credit unions that weren't part of the problem. And my simple question to the individual was, well, if you're, if you're consolidating all, this position, all these positions and powers within a new uh, bureaucracy, shouldn't the people who've been doing it in the past have stopped and those positions gone away? And he had no answer. Well, exactly. And uh, y- y- in the meantime, Fannie and Freddie were seeing executives there pulling down some $12 million in bonuses for all of their good work over the years. Yeah, it's, it is. The word you used is surreal. That's right. Salvador Dali should be out here painting as we speak. Because the reality is they, the largest, most powerful special interest is big government. And no matter what the situation, there are individuals here in Washington who will find ways to make it bigger. Now, the thing that we find particularly frustrating if you're out here defending taxpayers and people who actually pay their bills is that they will garb their growth of big government in the most, I think, offensive terms, where they act as if the American people need to be protected from themselves. And I think the reality is the opposite. They need to be protected from big government. Well, meantime, the president's continuing to push his uh, his latest stimulus package that he calls the uh, the jobs bill. And we, I saw a story that uh, 40 House Republicans, for the first time, have uh, now sent a letter to the new super committee that's got to come up with some sort of uh, uh, decision on, on cutting down the debt here in the next couple of weeks, uh, saying that they, they might be in favor of, uh, of increased revenues. Uh, were you a party to that uh, letter that was sent to the committee? No, and I've talked to my colleagues about that, and my position is we shouldn't be talking about that because it's exactly what they'll do, and it'll lead to tax increases. You can't show any uh, willingness to do the wrong thing in a recession and try to raise revenues quote-unquote, through taxes, they're going to make it harder for people to find work and harder for this entre- the entrepreneurs and the workers of this country to grow the economy. And 
unfortunately, I think they went ahead and did it, but that's their determination to make. Now, in fairness to them, they've been very clear that they're not talking about tax increases. But my concern is, is that no matter how clear and explicit House Republicans or Senate Republicans or any Republican can be, uh, the media is going to prevent what it believes uh, it wants to get across. So you don't think that there is suddenly a, a change of heart among uh, Republicans who control the House to, uh, to go against their no-tax pledge? No, because it's the pledge we made to the American people, and it's the right thing to do. If you increase the amount of money that the public sector, the least productive element of our economy, or pardon me, of our, of our society, starts to take out of the most productive free market economy, you're going to see continued stagnation here and continue to see people suffer. So House Republicans are not backing off of that. Congressman McCotty, you're not that far removed from uh, being out on the campaign trail in the in the presidential race. I'd, I'd like to get some of your thoughts on what's been going on with Herman Cain lately and these uh, these allegations that he he said some uh, some unwelcome things to employees 15 years ago at the Restaurant Association. What's your thought of what's happening out there? Well, as a full disclosure, obviously as a Romney supporter, I'm not the most objective source. But what I would say is it's unfortunate. Uh, to see the issues in the campaign descend to this level already. And what you have to do as Republicans is remember, while we're competing for a very important nomination, uh, the key is going to be winning the general election. Now, as for the specifics, I know as little as anybody else. I do know from my own personal interaction with Mr. Cain, he strikes me as a very good man. But as Republicans, I would hope uh, that one way or another these issues are addressed forthrightly and that the party as a whole and the candidates collectively can move on and continue to discuss the issues that matter to the American people, especially this economy. In, in, in layman's terms, do you think he screwed it up with the way he handled it, though, where his story, his explanation seemed to change over time, even if only slightly? Well, he's running as a non-politician, but I, I would think that as an individual who's had something like this happen to them, is that you have to anticipate that in a political realm this is going to arise, uh, either you know, uh, through normal procedures or because somebody put it there, and you're going to have to address it. I would hope uh, that while this is a, a obviously an awkward way for him to try to deal with it, is that I just kind of wish that he'd at least have been more prepared to deal with it should it have arisen. Yeah, and, and uh, your take on on the race right now? Kane continues to run strong. Looks like he's in. It looks like this this maelstrom has has not impacted him uh, in the polls that that uh, that have been taken since. Well, no, and one of the things you'll find. Uh, with people who support a candidate is when the candidate is under attack, especially uh, in the national media, as their supporters tend to become more energized. So however and whoever uh, put the story out, if their intent was to weaken the base of support Mr. Kane has, that's not what seems to be happening. Yeah, Romney's still strong in uh, in New Hampshire, though. Kane's strong in South Carolina. Uh, I, handicap it for me right now. Well, I think that what really happened in I won't go into my race, but what happened is I think that uh, Mr. Perry got off to a very good start and was able to not able to sustain it. And you're seeing that Mr. Romney's strategy of continuing to just to go forward one day at a time, stick on the economy, is working for him. I think that Mr. Kane's appeal to the Tea Party individuals and the people who are discontented with people who've run before is still there. But I think at the end of the day, the most organization and the most resources that we can bring to bear in the general election are going to be determinate in what Republican electors decide to do in the terms of the nomination. And I think, obviously, as a Romney supporter, that's him. I think he gives us our best bet to win. If a third-party candidate runs, a strong one, say a Ron Paul uh, or a Kane, for that matter, would would, uh, would that ensure Barack Obama's re-election? Well, it certainly would not help. Now, I don't know that it would ensure it, because as you remember back in 1980, Frank, you had a struggling Democratic president who was absolutely clueless about the economy, the uh, Soviet Union was marching all over the globe, advancing satellite states. And the election came down to Jimmy Carter, the incumbent Democrat, versus Ronald Reagan, the Republican nominee, and a man named John Anderson, who was a Republican that ran as an independent, and yet Reagan still won that election handily. Yeah, I also know, though, Ross Perot ran, and uh, and, and they got Bill Clinton elected, too. So, Yeah, that's true. Unfortunately, none of uh, the candidates that I've seen, I don't think Mr. Paul... Representative Paul or Mr. Kane have talked about doing that. And I think that what you see out of the vast majority of people is much like in 1980. Americans understand this is a very critical period of time for the country, that the next election is going to lead us, hopefully, in the proper direction. And unlike the elections of 1992 or 1996, the country was not facing many of the momentous challenges that it is today. 
All right. Thanks for being with us. Always good to talk with you. Thank you, Frank. Take care. Thaddeus McCotter, the congressman, coming up in a moment. Charles Pugh, the head.